Hey everyone, my name is Patchworker and welcome to this video where I'm gonna break down my second track of my EP called the Mr. Bill Remixes. If you haven't watched the first video already, have a look if you want to. Otherwise, I'm gonna jump into this remix of Mr. Bill's track called IRL. There's a link in the description to the original track and also a link to Mr. Bill's official website where you can download and mess around yourself with the original uh, project files of plenty of his projects, including IRL. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm not going to talk too much about the intro because it's mostly just a small build-up quite quick to the first drop. So we're just going to go directly in the first drop and I'm going to talk a bit about what I did there. It sounds like this. So uh, let's start from the top. Here I have my kick snare track. There's nothing too interesting about it. It's just basically a kick. In this soft chained group here, I have all the things that are not too clashing with the kick. And so I side chain this one slightly less aggressively than the hard chain group. You can see that the ratio is lower and the threshold is a bit higher. Um, because I know that all the frequencies in there are quite high frequencies that won't clash too much with the kick, so I, I uh, sidechain it a tiny bit less. The group sounds like this. So I won't go into too much detail about what happened there, it's just basically a whole bunch of drum um, and percussion sounds that I modified and that I threw in huge, huge drum racks and that I just played around with. Uh, I just played a bunch of stuff and uh, found the sounds that sounded better in the track. Then there is one thing that I used in the shaker sound down here that I think is interesting and that you might uh, use in your own productions. Uh, originally, without all the effects, the shaker sounds like this. But considering the timber of the track, I thought that the sound was a bit too harsh. So what I did to um, tackle this problem was first a bit of EQing, uh, removing a few annoying frequencies. But the magic really happens, in my opinion, in this Erosion plugin here. Uh, if I play it without, it sounds like this. And here's with. And so you can hear that this completely changes the timbre of the sound, uh, because the incoming audio is modulated by a sine wave instead of noise or wide noise. And so this creates a much more quieter and less harsh sound that I preferred in the context of this track. All right, now let's move on to the hard chain group on which I have some synths. They sound like this. Here I really have two layers. Uh, the first one sounds like this. And so the patch itself is quite simple. It's just three instances of operator. The first one sounds like this. It's just a bunch of sine waves going out uh, at different pitches and different fine courses and a bit of LFO modulating their pitch. Then the second layer sounds like this. And the pitch envelope is modulated by those two LFOs that you can see here. They modulate those two parameters and this creates the difference in the attack of the sound. Sometimes the sound goes up, sometimes it goes down, and I think it added a bit more uh, uniqueness to the sound. And the last layer is a click, but we can barely hear it. Let me crank it up. And this is just to add some more attack to the sound. Now, if I remove all the effects, it sounds like this. So pretty boring, right? But you might remember from the previous episode that there's this amazing plugin called Portal. And this plugin portal will create all sorts of artifacts and delays after the sound is played. Here you can hear it in action. If I crank it the wet control all the way up, you'll hear it even better. And so to reach this sound, I just took a pre-made preset that I really liked, that sounded good, and I modified it a tiny bit and uh, that was enough to create a really good sound. So again, Portal, really strong plugin. I can't recommend it enough. So there's a second synth going on. It sounds like this. And 
And you can see down there that it's just a face plan preset with a portal uh, after it again to add this sort of more interesting grainy delays afterwards. Now let me jump directly to this Vox group, so all the vocals. Uh, this is the main melodic element, I think, to the drop and what makes it really interesting. It sounds like this. So all of the sounds here, except for the very first one, which comes from a sample pack, came from my voice, actually. So this is pretty much how it came into play. So in short, what I did to create these kind of sounds is that I just hummed something in my microphone. So for example, or any other note that was in key of the track. And then I threw it in some distortion, lots of different dif distortion, and added reverb afterwards so that it sounds sort of aggressive, but at the same time dreamy towards the end. So if I play another one, this was also by just humming something like, like this, and then adding some, uh, some effects on it. So I also have a super saw here. It's a face plant preset that I created, and basically it's just a super saw as you can hear. But I also added four knobs to make uh, modulation and expression easier in this patch. So I can modulate the filters, the saturation, and some more extreme saturation. And if you listen to the very beginning of the drop, it sounds like this. And towards the end, it gets crazier and crazier. All in the hope of creating some more energy towards the end of the drop. So let's now move on to the bridge. It sounds like this. So here, as you could hear, we still have the vocals and we also have a new synth playing, which sounds like this. So this patch was made in Operator, it's nothing too complicated, it's just a bunch of saw wave FMing each other and whatnot. But the interesting thing happens here in the filter section. I automated the attack, the decay and the peak of the filter envelope so that it sort of moves and the attack becomes quicker and quicker uh, for each bar. So if you listen to the first two hits, they're sort of mellow, you can hear the filter opening, but when you listen to the last two hits of the bar, they're much sharper and uh, sort of hit a bit harder, which is what I wanted uh, to create this sort of moving patch again. And again, I have Portal at the end, creating these sort of grainy artifacts and delays that you can hear at the end. There is another thing that is worth mentioning here, and it's the main thing that I took from the original track, and it's the piano melody that you can hear right here. So this is the original theme of the IRL track by Mr. Bill. Now uh, we can move on to the second drop, which sounds like this. So really there's nothing too complicated in there. There's just a kick and a snare track as always. Uh, some perks and uh, hi-hats playing in the top end. Then we have a quite heavy saw wave, again a super saw, but this time with an LFO tool that creates a sort of um, ducking effect. This is with and this is without. So this is for the ducking effect. Then we have another operator patch in the, the synth section. It sounds like this. And so this is just a pretty simple operator's patch with a few sine waves and a square wave at the end, FMing each other. And it's going through a delay and some reverb and some OTT to bring it up. 
it's nothing too complicated, but I just think that it adds a very dreamy and space-ish vibe to the track, which I really liked. And although there's nothing too crazy in terms of sound design or things like this, there is one thing that I want to highlight, and it's the role of this little thing here. So it doesn't sound like much, but it plays as a drone throughout the drop, and I think that without it, you can clearly hear that something is missing. But with it, it adds a very nice background touch to the thing that makes the whole drop a bit fuller, I would say. So this is with, and then I'll play it without. So you've probably heard it, but I think it really makes a huge difference in the, the way the drop hits, all in all. For the outro, there's nothing too crazy, it's just taking the same elements that we heard throughout the track and bringing everything to an end. So I think this concludes the walkthrough of my remix of Mr. Bill's track called IRL. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something in there. Uh, the next track will come out next week, and until then, take care. <laughs>